<coughs> Hello, you are watching MMA Crips Fight and Talk. For today's show, I'll be speaking with Jake Brutal Boswick. Jake is currently competing under the Cage Warriors banner, and he is currently 2-0 under that promotion. Uh, with that, welcome to the show, Jake. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure, Jake. Now, I want to start the show with your walkout at Cage Warriors 64, before I dig into your boat with Baldé. Yeah. You came out once again at Cage Warriors 64 with the Bane attire on. Could you tell us how the Bane walkout came to be, please, Jake? You know, um, when I watched the um, the Batman originally, and obviously I see Bane, I just thought it was a great character. A lot of people saying, oh, it looks like me, and so forth. I think it's just more like the skinhead, a little bit big or whatnot. And I thought, oh, that'd be great as an entrance. And then um, Kieran Kettle, my cornerman, was like, you know, I think it's a great idea. Maybe something you should do. You get people, you know, looking at you and so forth and talking about it, which, again, it definitely is. And, you know, I've done it for the first time, obviously, out in Amman in Jordan. And um, and I got a great, great response from it. So I thought, you know, it could be my, my, my new thing, just stick with doing that. You know, it's it's a, it's a great entrance. Yeah, and, uh, and I enjoy doing it. So, uh I thought it was pretty fun. So we can expect the Bane walkout in future fights from you, Jake? Uh, yeah, I'd say so, definitely. Maybe a few changes next time. Um, working on a few different things to make it a little bit more characteristic. But, but yeah, obviously I've got the vest and the uh, and the mark. So, um, yeah, that's the first step. Now, the fight with Bubakar Balde was a middleweight bout. Uh, apparently you had a good Christmas and a new year and gained a couple of extra pounds. Yep. So you moved up from welterweight to middleweight for this one fight. Now, I've always known you to compete at middleweight, Jake, because I watched you early on in your career at UCMMA and whatnot. Could you tell us how long you've actually been competing at welterweight for? Um, well, welterweight, I've actually only had one scheduled fight at welterweight, and that was obviously against Jermaine Facey, and I weighed in at 77 uh, kilos. And um, since then, I've had uh, maybe three catchweights. Um, two, two at 80 kilos and one at 81 kilos. So theoretically, I've only actually had one fight at welterweight. But you know, it's it's another few kilos that I could easily do. Not easily, but it's you know, it can be done for a, a show whenever. Um, so yeah, you know, I've been fighting for middleweight before that quite a while. But the welterweight, yeah, it's only been a few fights. But you know, it's definitely my weight class. How much weight did you actually put on over the Christmas period, Jake, if you don't mind telling us? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, uh, at Christmas, I think I went up to about 99 kilos. Um, and for a world weight, that's quite a lot. You know, you're looking at 90, 91. You know, that's that's kind of where you want to be. And obviously, from December to, to February is, is not a long time. I could have dieted very extreme, but being pretty tired through training sessions. So I was like, you know, get me a, a reasonable middleweight that wants to stand and bang. Um, you know, and just sort of take it from there because then I knew I could serve my carbs and train hard in the morning, train hard in the evening and still feel fresh, you know, rather than sort of being on no carbs and whatnot. It just would have been a right pain in the butt. So, yeah, that's why I've got this fight scheduled at middle. Well, uh, apparently you asked for a reasonable size bit of weight for this boat as it was you stepping up in weight. I'm yep. not too sure how Baldé stands up against some of the bigger middleweights at Cage Warriors, but he's pretty big. Muscular-wise, anyway, he's pretty big. Yep. When you first know how big he was, did you actually have a little bit of doubt that you could actually move him around like you did in the cage? You know, when I see the size of him, especially when he'd uh, blown up after the, after weigh-ins, I actually see him in the cage uh, fight day. I yeah. was like, man, he is big. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, I wrestle, I wrestle and spar with a lot of big guys. Sparring with big guys and wrestling with guys is very different. And you know, I can hit people that are big, no problem. To wrestle with them, the strength and the power, and you know how big they are, obviously you're going to have more problems. And yeah, I was pretty surprised. Not say easy, but I did wrestle him very well, and I'm very happy, and I was very confident with my wrestling against him. Um, so yeah, I was I was pretty shocked to be honest uh, how well I did do uh, wrestling against him. Uh, I want to move on to the cut you suffered in the fight, Jake. You <laughs> suffered a pretty deep cut. At the end of round two, as uh, Baldo managed to look a few elbows near the end of the round for our listeners. <laughs> uh, was there any concerns in between the rounds that the fight might be stopped off the cut, Jake? And yeah, what was not... the and what was the conversation between you and the doctor, if you can recall? Yeah, um, well, basically, um, obviously, I stood up and I knew there was a lot of blood. 
Um, and the good thing, I, I believe, with, with the cut situation, because obviously now that we've got the safe MMA involved, it's like, um, obviously we all, we're all tested, we're all clean. So personally, as, as a personal view, it's like if you've got a bad cut, and I feel I'm okay, I want to continue, I believe that should be, like, my choice. If I've got blood going to my eyes and my vision's a little bit blurry or whatever, then, again, I believe that's my choice. If it's safe enough to continue, I believe I can. Obviously, there's no, you know, there's no, um, obviously, with a safe MMA, there's no infections or anything going around, so it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, so as soon as we stood up, he cleaned me up, and a doctor looked at me and said, Jake, can you see me? I was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, and the, the referee said to the doctor, is there any reason why I should be stopping the fight now? And the doctor said to me, Jake, do you want to continue? Like, do you feel like you're okay to continue? I said, like, yeah, I'm fine. My head's fine. I've got no problems, got no pains. I want to continue. I'm fine. And he said, okay, it's fine then. And it was literally as clean cut as that, mate. You know, there's no there's no infections going around, so why, why should we not be able to carry on? Well, your blood actually landed all over the commentary desk. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I did apologise to them. Put a bit of blood on their, on their MacBooks. <laughs> Yeah, the guy, he was stood up, I wonder what he was doing at first. He, I could see him wiping something, I'm thinking, he's wiping blood off his desk. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of blood, you know, obviously with the adrenaline thing, obviously the blood's just pouring out. It, it was literally like a tap, it was crazy. Now, the blood was getting in your eyes uh, when you was taken down in round three, I noticed that. Um, was it affecting you at all when you were stood up in the fight? Yeah, um, when I actually got up at the point where I said I couldn't stay there, I did get up, wrestled him to the fence, I genuinely couldn't really see it was very blurry um so i actually pushed off and just started exchanging again and it did look a little bit sloppy but i couldn't see too much it was very it was a bit iffy the blood had literally just gone in so i just needed a little wipe and i could kind of see again the the visibility was pretty poor to be honest but at the end of the day i just dug deep and just wanted to keep fighting i had no intentions of stopping so well the funny thing is the blood mainly played a part when you was on the ground like it was in your eyes when you was on your back but when you mounted Balde in round three it yep. looked to be going into his eyes and then as he was like oh, you started pounding him and ground and pounded him <laughs> yeah I know it's, you know obviously I was on top of him throwing shots bleeding or not bleeding he's going to re receive them so if he's got his eyes closed <laughs> he's going to get punched in the face so it made no difference did you ever like have a little fit to yourself thinking do you know I might just because it was spread out pretty bad because I, I see your white pit and it was spread all over the back did you ever think like maybe I'll just stay in this into his eyes a little bit no <laughs> uh, no nah, nah, not at all you know my intention was to you know just stay on top just keep grinding him down just keep punching him keep working my elbows maybe cut him maybe knock him out you know I really did try and finish it I didn't want to rush it when I hit top mount and in side control even I was really really patient because I knew if I held him there I knew I was scoring I was winning um, you know, the blood got into his face, you know, it was just going into his face, so I wasn't intending on doing that. Um, just wanted to keep punching him, mate, really. Now, I noticed Baldy had to be thoroughly wiped down in between rounds, uh, mainly rounds two and rounds three, mm -hmm. as he had excess water on him, and there was a, a little puddle on the floor near his feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the commentary team were stating he might be trying to gain a little extra time so he can grab himself an extended break in between rounds. Now, obviously, you noticed this, because... Um, you actually went for a sneaky water break yourself over the I wasn't the sneaky. <laughs> I wasn't being sneaky at all. You know, obviously, I see that I was waiting. And, obviously, he's just standing there getting wiped down. And I'm pacing up and down. You know, I was like, okay, well, while I'm waiting, I might as well have a bit of water. I, was, I couldn't see the issue in that personally. I didn't see the, the swig of water. That's all I wanted. You know, not even that I wanted. It was just there. I might as well take the opportunity. I turned around and they're still doing it. I was like, oh, give me some water while I'm waiting. You know, it was just, it, that's all it was. It was nothing... I wasn't trying to be sneaky about anything, you know. Um, and obviously then you hear the ref like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, okay, just, just, just get a bit of water, man. Just waiting. <laughs> so I, I'm not pouring it all over myself like Baldy. <laughs> I, I, just, I just literally wanted to drink, mate. That's what it was, just while I was waiting. Well, did you think his corner was trying to buy him a little extended break in between the rounds? Um, possibly. You know, um, I don't really care, you know, because if he's getting a break, I'm getting a break. So That's I can't true. really complain, you know. Um, I wasn't, don't get me wrong, I wasn't, blowing out my bum I wasn't that tired I was okay towards the end of the third obviously I was I was getting there but I was okay you see me pace up and down I was ready to go um, he was standing there pretty gassed um, whether they did or not I don't know but again if he's getting a breather so am I so I couldn't really complain now I noticed in round one when you had the full mount on Baldy you chose the high mount and got your hips pretty much high on Baldy's chest was there a reason you chose the high mount? And could you tell us the benefits of having a high mount, please, Jake? You know, um, 
whenever in training, um, or even, well, yeah, even in training, to be honest, when people mount or I mount people, you yeah. buck and you push and you get your hips out and you pull back to guard. And it's like, that happens a lot of the time. And I've actually been stopped myself being high mounted. And there's a few escapes, obviously, that I know now. But as um, someone putting on a high mount, obviously, as soon as you sit on their hips, they can buck. And you're posturing up and, you know, you're, you're, I'm all over the gaff and he can push me around. Whereas if you're high up on the chest and he bucks, I'm nowhere near his hips. So he can't really do much. And it's such an awkward position for them. Um, so obviously, yeah, the, the, the difference between sitting on hips is that you can't get bucked. So as soon as you're sitting high, you can still rain down the shots and it's so uncomfortable for them and they can't really push you off. Well, I noticed you managed to transition to side control fairly easily from that position too. Is that another benefit? Um, yeah, I actually prefer side control more than mount. Again, because with the mount, you can buck and push. With the side, I could rain down a few... A few, I got a few um, sort of back elbows in, you know, like dirt, like cheeky elbows. I could work a bit more ground and pound. I was kind of trying to go for the crucifix, trying to lock up his arm. A couple of times, I grabbed one of his arms, and he was just so strong, just powered out of it. So I was like, okay, work side control a little bit, work back to mount. As long as I knew I stayed busy and on top, I knew that I was scoring. So I went from mount to side, back to mount a couple of times, just because I wanted to mix it up. And I prefer side, to be honest, than mount. So yeah, that's why I done it. Now, as I mentioned, Jake, I began watching you back in UCMA. Uh, that was, what, 2007, 2008 time? You was only young. You must be, what, about 18 or something, Jake? Yeah, pretty young. <laughs> so you had a pretty much uh, knockout or, you know, or you're going to get knocked out style in the cage. Um, basically, it was like a one-round fight with you, Jake. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like balls to the wall. But in your fighter cage, Warriors, the other night, it's like, a totally different Jake Boswick. He was more controlled and more patient. Uh, when did you introduce this into your game, if you can recall? You know what? I, I, I get, I get this gets spoken about a lot of times now, um, and I've had a few interviews. The same question comes up. What it was, it was kind of you know, I had my fight against Dennis and Sutherland the first time round. Um, he was a, it was a prospect. You know, he was a great middleweight. Um, I wasn't doing too great. My record wasn't perfect. You know. Um, but I had, uh, I think I just come off a knockout win. And I was like, okay, I want a challenge. I want to fight the best and so forth. And Dennis and Sutherland come up, and he was in like the top five in the UK. And I was like, this will really push me up there. And you know what? I had a free round war with him. Um, I had my head screwed on for that fight. I, you know, I controlled him well on the floor. It was very back and forward. He smashed me in the second round. Absolutely annihilated me for like three minutes straight, ground and pound. Um, and I got out of it. And you know, I think it was the first time in my career I actually kind of showed a bit of heart. And it was like my love for the sport then completely changed. It was like I got a win against such a big guy. Um, and yeah, just from then on, I had a lot of people say to me, Jake, you can really make something of your of your career in, in this sport. And I kind of took a step back, think about you know what I was doing with myself. I was doing a little bit of work here and there. I kind of went full time into the gym, mate, and I've just knuckled down from then and worked everything, you know. Um, and yeah, I know I've evolved. I know I'm changing. Obviously, I'm maturing and growing older anyway. But yeah, it was, I think it was from my first fight with Dennis and Sutherland was my turning point in my career to now winning my last 11 out of 12 fights or whatever it is. You know, I'm on a seven win streak and things are looking really positive for me. Now, before we leave, I'd like to move on to what is next for you, Jake. Uh, apparently, you called out Paul Daly <laughs> after the fight in a post-fight interview. Now, you're both obviously competing for different mixed martial arts companies in the UK, so it sort of ruins their potential bout. But I've noticed Paul Daly has been competing in kickboxing. Would you be allowed to compete against Paul Daly, possibly, in a kickboxing bout outside of Cage Warriors? Um, I'm sure something like that could be, um, could be arranged, no problem. Um, the thing, obviously, I wasn't, don't, don't think, and if Paul Daly is seeing this or hearing this, don't think for one minute I'm calling him out or disrespecting him yeah. at all. At the end of the day, he's ranked number one in the country. He says no one will stand and trade with him and so forth. At the end of the day, I will, you know. Um, I'm a striker, he's a striker, so I believe let's stand and bang put on a great show. That's how I'm thinking. For him, maybe he's thinking maybe it's not a great move. I'm not a you know a high ranked fighter in the UK. I'm in the top top ten or top nine or whatever. Um, so yeah, you know, at the end of the day, if it's something that could be arranged a kickboxing fight, then great. Um, as an MMA fight, I think it'd be a lot better. You know, there's a lot more more, more to the game that we can do. Um, you know, he's a he's a great fighter, awesome fighter, and, and to fight somebody like him of his caliber would be would be perfect um, but you know it's something that could could happen one day in the future for sure 
Well, your next boat for Cage Warriors, will it be middleweight, catchweight or welterweight, Jake? Um, it should be at welterweight, mate. There's no reason why it would be at catchweight unless I'm fighting someone who's pretty big and wants to catch weight and, you know, that would be a good fight for me or whatever. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm straight back down to welterweight, mate, just uh, fighting at the weight class I should be at. Well, Jake, thank you for joining me today. Is there anything you would like to say to our listeners before we leave? Um, yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to all, you know, friends and family, everyone that comes to support me all the time, you know, showing their love for me. Uh, big uh, big shout out to Outrage Fightwear, you know, sort me out my, my corner team with their clothing, my fight shorts and so forth, all the equipment that you supply me with. Uh, shout out to XS Scars as well, sort me out a nice, nice, nice mouthpiece. Um, yeah, to Double K Gym um, and Team Titan, everyone that's supporting me down there. Big shout out to my dad also, helping me my weight cut and, you know, step by step, pushing me through uh, every last little bit. So, yeah, big thanks to, uh, thanks to my father as well. Okay, from MMA Crips Fighting Talk, thank you for watching.